Today we're back on the Hellfox because we're waiting on parts from all Christmas and New Year's delays. Might as well do some work on this thing. We're gonna pull the turbos off today. We're gonna weld up our Maven mounts completely so we get all the shrinkage and warpage out of them. Put the turbos back on and we can start building our hot side. Now for our manifolds, we're just modifying the stock manifolds. These are like big beefy cast pieces and they actually su like flow surprisingly well. I just have a schedule 1090 here that I cut off and ovaled out. That's gonna fit on there. We're gonna weld that to the cast manifold. We can either put a V-band on here or we can uh, add another piece of schedule 10, uh, two and a half inch stuff. But this is the easiest way for compact spaces because these manifolds were made to fit in like a car, so. Boys, we finally did it. Brand new heater, $2,000 later, but that's as loud as it gets right there. And this is the warmest. <laughs> okay, maybe it gets louder. But we got a new heater, which means the garage is the warmest it's ever been right now. It's actually 22 and a half degrees Celsius in here. Mind you, that heater's only been running for like three hours, but it already feels enjoyable in here again. We're gonna block off all the ports on our manifold here with aluminum foil so you can get ready to back purge them. We're gonna put them in the oven to preheat them and then we're gonna weld these cast elbows on there. Well, stainless elbows. I think the bulb is getting bad. Oh my god, is that Sasuke? <laughs> look at it, it's not done yet, but look at wait, the back. Wait, wait. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now the argon going in the inside is probably going to start cooling it down, but it is what it is, to be honest. I've got to do my best. I'm just trying to make something that won't crack. Man, these things are hot, even with the mid gloves. Let's get the back Persian, back Persian flowing right away. And number two in the oven. Now the manifolds are done, we can put them back in place and see if we can mount our V-band on the end of this piece. Oh yeah, tons of room. There's like, I don't know, a quarter inch between that little stud there and the exhaust. We'll just cut that off a little bit. It'll be fine. Now that we have the turtles in, before I cut any pipe, we're gonna service the bandsaw. We're gonna put a new blade in this thing. We're also gonna put new bearings on everything because the old bearings look like, I don't know, starfish buttholes. But uh, yeah, new bearings everywhere, new bandsaw blade in it. We'll true up the blade because straight, flat cuts, best for fabricating. Now, obviously I'm not very smart because I did not know that these bolts were like not straight. So like you can twist them and adjust the blade. Kyle, you're an idiot. You, you can't even see the exhaust from here, but I did have to pie cut it a bunch. I'm trying to keep in mind that like, we want as much clearance as we can get on the tire. So right now we have probably an inch of clearance. So there's not much clearance. There's like, I don't know, half an inch to an inch at like full lock. So you just have to be careful when you're turning 
Um, all the weight is on the car right now, so this is that ride height. And then when you straighten it out again, I can fit almost my whole hand in there, so should be enough for most big bumps. Now ideally you wouldn't want to use that tight of a radius, but it is three and a half inch pipe. So we're three and a half, we're gonna try and put a muffler in there and then come out through the front. The only other alternative, put the pipe up through here and then down through the bottom down there. Yo, what's up guys? Kyle here from Kitty Lifestyle. And if you like kitties, this is your lifestyle. Also, my wiener, tiny. Once again, Kyle, peace easy, get that V. Well, the hot side's not gonna build itself, so let's start by building the pipe from the exhaust manifold up to the turbo, then we can worry about the downpipes after that. That's just one step closer to glory. I don't even care about the rest of it, I just want the glory. Let's get some uh, favorite Lego pieces out. We're actually gonna have to use some reducers right here. We're gonna have to cut them down a little tiny bit to fit in our Black Sheep Industries T4 flanges. These are just like a billet smooth flange. And these specific ones are just for like log manifolds, but we're gonna use them with ours. That's why we need these reducers. It's made for a schedule 10 pipe, which is inside diameter two and a half inches, which it fits in there perfectly. These are two and a half outside diameter. So they actually slide on the inside. We're just gonna cut these down. We're gonna use that in there, and that is gonna work a lot better. Now, I don't actually have a way I prefer to build stuff. I'm actually building this one from both sides and being in the middle kind of deal this time. Uh, I've got to cut down, I've got to cut down this reducer, so we're gonna look how big this is. Lock that in place. I'm gonna have to cut a ton off it. I guess we can actually chuck this thing in the lathe to get a real good mark on it. So smart, Kyle. You so smart sometimes. Oh. Blew the fuse, baby. This ladle never cuts stainless. It's too much of a wussy, so grinder it is, but we've got a nice little scribe mark for ourselves. Look at it. Neato. The vice that never gets mounted for this exact reason. We're getting closer and this little, this little bend on this side is actually gonna make a great spot to uh, put the wastegate, I think. Here's our first pipe. Now we didn't weld a V-band on it, we didn't weld the T4 flange on it, but this is how it slips in there. We're gonna weld this all first, get the shrinkage out of it, probably put the wastegate in it because it's probably going to warp a little bit when we weld the wastegate on as well. And then you stick it up there, put it in your V-band and your T4 flange, tack weld that in place so you have minim minimal warpage uh, before you weld it. Because if you weld it with the flange on and the T4 on and then you weld this all up, it's gonna be out by like eighth of an inch when you're done welding it. Here's what it looks like all finished up. I actually scuffed it with the scotch brake pad because I left some fingerprints on it. Uh, so I scuffed it up. It just gets the color out of the welds. No big deal. Uh, put it on the car now for where we want to put our wastegate in it and cut that hole, which is going to be the hardest part of this whole thing. Also, I haven't welded in a while, so it's a little inconsistent and I need to get back behind the torch some more. But this is what I love doing. I love making turbo kits, which is why I should probably do more of them instead of stupid things that I'm doing in here. 
Now we're going to be using a pair of Black Sheep Industries waist gates, two 45 millimeter waist gates. It's actually our own company. I am part owner of this company. I'm super proud of what we've made and, and how far we've come since we started. We do have the matching blow off valve for this thing. And unlike a typical waste gate, this doesn't have a diaphragm in it. It's actually a piston with O-rings. So you can have as low as like one pound of boost if you want to, and up to 200 pounds of boost if you want to put that much CO2 to the top side of this thing. And you're not gonna break that diaphragm in the middle and you won't have to run a very heavy spring in it. So, so for the guys who wanna run CO2 or onboard air to control your waste gates, this thing is the perfect option because you can apply as much as you want to the top side of this dome without breaking it. So let's mount a pair of these bad boys on there and well, one per side. Let's just start with one. Some Schedule 10 stainless. this way. And the waste gate's welded on there. We just have to weld the V-band on this side and the T4 flange on that side. And that's one hot side done, baby. A couple of quick upgrades for the garage. Need this for my grinding discs. Need that for when I'm grinding out here by myself. It's as loud as it gets. It helps if I turn the volume up on my phone, I guess. And that's better. Just one little upgrade at a time. That's way better. All my grinding discs just used to be down here all covered in grinding shit, so that's gonna keep them clean at least. Wasted enough time? Time to get to it? No one's gonna build it unless I do it, so... Side number two, baby. Man, this speaker is just a vibe. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Here's our pipe for this side. It's just a little swoop up in there. And this one just fits something like that. So we're gonna weld this pipe up, back purge it all, and then uh, probably put the wastegate dump somewhere over here. Try and match up the other side and then we can weld our flanges on. Also, we got some aluminum pipes and our heim joints. So we can continue working on our uh, F1000 cart. Now here's our pipe. Uh, I did have a little bit of discoloration issue here because I think the gas was coming back through on the back purge. I'm fairly new to back purging and I don't have any purge plugs, uh, but we have no sugaring on the inside, which is really good. It's mostly fully penetrated. I might need a little bit more amps. This is uh, two mil thick uh, elbows, so it is a little on the thicker side. I wouldn't know much about penetrating anyways. This is going to be the start of our wastegate tube. We're gonna put it right here on this elbow to try and get at least some uh, direct flow into the wastegate. One benefit about these 45 millimeter gates is they actually flow like 50s, so even if we don't have the best flow, they're still big enough that they should scavenge a lot of the uh, exhaust gases. But roughly there uh, is going to put the wastegate in a similar spot as the other side, which, when you're doing twin turbos, you kind of want to have things a little bit mirrored. It's a little bit hard because we're trying to avoid the alternator on one side and the other side, there was no alternator. I can't get over how floofy my hair is right now. Majestic. But I'm going to start, uh, put a flappy wheel on my grinder and work that down. Man, turbo kits take a long time. This is like, I don't know, hour 12 for me. But uh, pretty similar wastegate location spots. 
obviously trying to get the priority to the exhaust gas that's getting out of the engine. This one, we just have to finish welding the V-band and the flange, it's all tacked in place. You just gotta pull it off, weld it off. But man, is this thing looking cool. It's super satisfying. If you guys have watched my channel for a couple of years now, you'll notice that I didn't know how to make a turbo kit before. I couldn't weld, I didn't have a TIG welder. So I bought my own TIG welder, I just started to learn to practice because I was sick and tired of waiting on people to build stuff for me. It just goes to show anybody can pick up a TIG welder, just practice a little bit, you'll get better, you can build your own stuff. It's, it's way more fun to build a car than it is to buy it. Although it's not financially the smartest move. And there you have it, there's a Hellcat engine in a Fox body with a T56 Magnum and the turbos are connected to the motor. Engine, whatever you want to call it. You can see both, as you can see, one wastegate comes out right there, just past this bar right there. And this wastegate also just past that bar. Like I said, I tried to make priority for the wastegate, so it comes out of the header and kind of goes straight into the wastegate. Same thing with this one right there. Next time I see you guys, we're gonna drill some four inch holes in the side here, start building our three and a half inch downpipes. Our intercooler should be here tomorrow as well from Shearer Fab, so it's a twin turbo intercooler. And then we're just waiting on the plasma man intake and we can build the rest of the turbo kit and then this thing is done fabrication wise for the turbo kit stuff, which that is super exciting. If you guys love the videos, make sure you stick around. This thing's coming up next. Peace easy, get that V.